Today on Community Cooking, we have guest chef Abby Gremion sharing her love of Cajun cuisine. We'll show you how to make your own mix of Cajun spices and we're putting a twist on the traditional jambalaya with Abby's pastalaya. We are cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community. So grab a seat, get comfortable, we've got another great meal for you. This is your Community Cooking. Hello and welcome to Community Cooking. I am your host, Kirk Lines. In our kitchen today is Abby Grimion. Hi, Abby. Hi, Kirk. It's so good to be here. Well, it's very good to have you. Uh, you now are you're a home chef. Yes. But you're a home chef from Louisiana. Yes, I am. Okay. So that means you are bringing Cajun Creole dishes for us today? Absolutely. I would hope so. You know, it's funny because as for as many years as I've done this show, uh, I can't say I've done a lot of Cajun and Creole, especially with someone who's actually from Louisiana. Well, there's not very many of us out here, so, you know, I'm going to share my love for Cajun cooking and some things that everybody can do at home that you can have on, on hand. It's going to be great. Well, i got to tell you, I, I love it. I think for me, in terms of, like, you know, regional cuisines in the United States, it's one of the most interesting, and it's got just a ton of history behind it. In, you know, and we'll talk about some of that while we're cooking. But let's first talk about the dish you're going to make today. Pastalaya? Yes. We're going to do a twist on jambalaya, which is pastalaya. Um, normally, a jambalaya is served with a bed of rice. I grew up kind of eating rice all the time. I got tired of, of yeah, eating rice. Yeah, a lot of rice in, in Cajun Creole cooking. Absolutely. So, you know, what, <clears throat> what's the nice thing about this dish is that you can substitute that starch out with a pasta, and it makes it, like, a little bit more elevated. It's a little bit more elegant and it makes a really pretty presentation. Now is this something that you would actually see happen in in Louisiana or is this something that is kind of looked at as heresy? No, no, actually it's actually becoming very popular in Louisiana um, where people are substituting out the rice with a pasta just to kind of mix it up a little bit. Change it up a little bit, I got you. Now before we get started on our pasta lie, you're going to show us how to make what you're calling a Cajun seasoning mix. Yes, this is a DIY Cajun seasoning mix that pretty much everybody can make at home because a lot of these seasonings you're probably going to already have in your kitchen. Right, right. And, and let's be honest, the stuff that's labeled like Cajun seasoning or blackened seasoning mix, are they ever really that good? Eh, sometimes, you know, I have my local favorites, right. you know, but this is something that you can make at home. You know how fresh your seasonings are, you know, and then... True, true. Absolutely. I'm, I'm a big freak about making sure that I whatever I put in my food that I've controlled it. So, you know, I like this because, you know, if, say, you like a little bit more cayenne pepper, you can put a little bit more cayenne right. pepper in it. If you want black pepper, if you want paprika, and the, the trick for this one is getting the smoked paprika. That's really what puts it over the edge. Yeah, yeah. So well, well, why don't you tell us, go through all the spices and tell us what you have in yours. Okay, so we have some salt, the smoked paprika, garlic powder. Okay. I'm gonna throw that in there. We've got our traditional black pepper. Throw that in there. We've got some really beautiful thyme. Okay. Throw that in there. We have, of course, our cayenne pepper. Yeah, got to give it a little heat, right? A little bit of heat. Uh, we have our onion, um, onion powder. And last but not least, we have some Italian seasoning. Okay. So most of this. A little is basil, a little oregano, a little. little absolutely, okay. absolutely. Yep. And then we just mix that up, right? Um, yeah. You Do just. You, I think underneath I here. I think there might a be a spoon fork. down here. There you go. So just mix that up really nicely. And now this is something that you can make in big batches and keep on hand, and you, not just for Cajun cuisine, this can sort of become a little bit all-purpose. Absolutely. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a burger seasoned with that on top. Oh. Or put it in a meatloaf for what have you. I mean, that's, can, that's delicious right there. Oh, yeah. You, can, you could put this in eggs. You could put this sure. on, um, you know, like the kettle corn that you make oh, on, yeah. the, on the stove. Kind of doesn't matter. Yeah, it really doesn't matter. You can use, I use this type of seasoning all the time when I grill. This is the one that I have at home. Great. I want you to smell this. Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. so aromatic. It, it, it smells like food. Yes, it, it does. doesn't it smell <laughs> like a spice mix. It smells like food. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I, I literally keep this in my kitchen, and I'll just grab it whenever I want to season something, and Beautiful. it's usually all the time. So we're done with that, correct? Absolutely. Why don't I move this out of your way, and let's talk 
about the pastelaya. Let's before we get there, let's let's talk about some of the ingredients that we're looking at here. Okay. So one of the main ingredients that really makes it a true jambalaya is we have to have andouille sausage and tasso. Andouille sausage is a smoked pork sausage. Right. It has um, pepper, it has onions, it has all different sorts Garlic. of things. <laughs> Garlic. Right? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, there's you can use a different type of sausage if you want, if that's something that you already have in your fridge. But to truly have it be authentic, you need to have andouille. Now, tasso is also made from pork. It's also a pork uh, shoulder. But this one is seasoned uh, very heavily, so that way you have that extra kind of pepper kick. And, and, it's, and, it's, and it's cured, air, air, and th it kind of creates that sort of crust around the outside. It does, it does. So then when you eat it, it's kind of like meat candy goodness. It's awesome. And, and, and people from Louisiana, uh, if you're cooking Cajun or Creole, would be using this almost like if you were to use like bacon or, uh, or pancetta in like an Italian recipe where you're, 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 you're uh, rendering that and using that fat to cook your aromatics, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'm impressed that you brought real tasso. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm salivating right now because it smells so good. I want to cut off a slice and just start eating it. No, 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 not yet. Okay. Not yet. <laughs> okay, so we've got our tasso, we've got our, our, our andouille, and then just some regular players here, right? We've Absolutely. got onions, bell peppers, uh, tomatoes, green onions, parsley. And some thyme. Some thyme. And then what do we have here in our smaller dishes? So we've got some, um, some heavy cream. We have some garlic. Uh, some thyme, oregano, the smoked paprika, mm -hmm. and um, shoot, oh, this is um, vegetable oil. Vegetable oil, okay. And this is just pulverized garlic? Yeah. I, okay. you know, you can either use the minced garlic that you get in the jar, mm -hmm. or you can use the pulverized garlic that comes in the tube. Okay. I kind of prefer the pulverized garlic because I just feel like it cooks a little bit faster. Gotcha. Okay. So and then we have some stock as well in water? Absolutely. We have some, some chicken stock, and then we've got a little bit of water. Okay. So. All right. Well, put me to work. What do we do first? Okay. Let's first let's start chopping up that andouille and tasso. Okay. All right. And how would you like how would you like both chopped? So we're gonna chop it up into small pieces, um, because you know you want to remember that when you're eating this, you, you'll usually be eating this with a fork. You're not gonna have a knife. Okay. Um, so you cut it up into small pieces that are bite sized. Okay. So I'm gonna grab one of my handy knives. Let's, okay. Let's start cutting. Do you want to do one and I'll do the other? Absolutely. You okay. You want me to start on the tasso? Sure. Okay. I know that's all you, so I'm gonna let you have and it. And you want it all chopped up, or? Yeah. Let's go ahead and chop it all up. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever uh, said there's too much tasso in this recipe. <laughs> you there. know what? Pass me some more of that andouille because okay. I'm gonna cut that up as well. Same so, thing with the andouille. Absolutely. All right. Great. Now, you know, I mean, we, we you know we spoke about this earlier that that this there's such a, uh, a rich history to Cajun and Creole cooking, and there's a difference between the two. Absolutely. Let's discuss that a little bit. Like, you know, why don't you give me your take on it, and we'll kind of go from there. The difference between the two cuisines. Well, you know, Cajun cooking is is really something that that you what you end up doing is is you use what you have and you make something beautiful out of it. You know, the Cajuns that came down from um, Canada down to South Louisiana and settled there, you know, they lived off the land. And so they would literally take the things that they had from either what they grew or the- Hunted. Or hunted right. or raised, and they would make something beautiful out of it. And honestly, it's a great way to have to have life be, you know, it's a great metaphor for life. Just take what you have and make something beautiful. Right. So the original farms to table. <laughs> absolutely, it really was. We That's were, what we call it now. Well, we were hipsters before it was being cool to be <laughs> hipsters. <laughs> 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 Uh, that's funny. <laughs> so, so yeah. So, but you know, soul food is a little bit different. Now, soul food is where you have, you know, your collard greens and your mustard greens. Right. Um, but you know, when you, even when you cook those, you have to use ham hocks to really make it that authentic uh, flavor right. that is that is truly soul food. You have to use um, some other things because again, the people who were cooking soul, what we now call soul food. Um, were people who were working on the plantations and they were working side by side with these French chefs. So, you know, they took the things that they had from either Africa or, um, or Jamaica and they, you know, blended it with French food to make, really make something beautiful. And that became like Creole. Yes. Okay. 
And, and now, like, what you're seeing is you're seeing hybrids of the two. The, the distinction is starting to, because the longer those two cuisines exist in the same place, they start kind of becoming one, yeah. if you will, or it's a whole new thing, a whole, like an amalgamation of the two. Yes. Okay. Yes. But, you know, I mean, those of us from South Louisiana, sure, we, we like the, the um, hybrid every once in a while, but typically we're purists. We okay. like to be able to just have it the way that, you know, our moms made it and our grandmothers made it and, you know, just preserve those tr family traditions. And, and um, now, l if you had to characterize the difference between the two cuisines, flavor profile-wise, talk to me about that a little bit. Okay, so for, for Cajun food, I would say that's more spice. And the heat, a lot of the heat, the blackening. Yes, but for soul food, I'd say that's more savor. Okay. So, you know, it's going to be things that maybe have a little bit more of an oil base to it. Or a sauce, like a French-style sauce. Yes. Because these were a combination of, 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 of African cuisine in French kitchens. Yes. So you're seeing, like, tomato product and, and saucier sort of things. Absolutely. Again, Your etouffees. Etouffee, yeah, because, again, they were taking things that they were growing, right. you know, and then putting them into these dishes. Right. So, yeah, you're going to have more tomato. You're going to have more turnip. You're going to have, um, you know, the, the blends of animal and, and vegetable in a dish. Correct. Um, yeah, it's, it's really good. <laughs> and I think even the, 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 the term jambalaya, from what I've heard, and I could be wrong about this, but from what I've heard, yaya is the word for rice in African. So jambalaya. Yeah. So it's almost like a way to jumble up the, the rice. Absolutely. There you go. So, you know, a little, bit of a, a little bit of a food history lesson, which I find fascinating. And like I said, I think that in terms of ethnic and regional cuisines, it's one of the most fascinating in our country, you know, and, and sort of misunderstood, you know. I mean, let me ask you a question. Be honest about this. When you hear people say that blackening is nothing more than burning your food, how does that make you feel? Angry. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? It is, let it be known, it is, too, it, it, you're talking about two different things. And granted, to, to the untrained eye or palate, it might, you know, be a fine line there, but at the same time, it is not the same thing. It's not really even, not. Right. I, if anything, blackening is more of a charring of the seasoning, not necessarily the food. You always want the food to have, you know, the best preservation and the best, best flavor. The, the blackening is, is that, that, um, that seasons the food because then it gives it that extra kind of profile. All right, so uh, into a pan, we're we gonna put a little bit of oil in that or how does that work? Um, we yeah, we're gonna throw a little bit of our, our vegetable oil in there. Okay, you got the heat, yeah, I can see the heat's up. on. Good. Do the vegetable oil. Okay, and what do you like, uh, dice? Sure, dice is great. Okay. So then we're gonna go ahead and take our meat and we're gonna throw that in there. Great. Actually, I'm gonna let the p pan heat up a little bit more. So that it's not going into a cold pan. Gotcha. Right. All right. Um, so plus it'll have that nice sizzle. Yeah, and, and you want to you you're looking to put, not like render out a little bit of the fat, and then also put a little bit of texture on the meat itself. Absolutely. Okay, and that's going to be the flavor base for uh, the the rest of this meal. All these aromatics that we're cutting up. Let's get started on an onion. One sure. Of actually, okay. I'm going to switch knives. All right. All right. And now, what's, what I think another thing that we should talk about here too is the the combination of onions and peppers. Now, typically, you also see celery too. Do you not? You don't put any celery in your. your I'm actually allergic to celery. So. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Okay, yeah, that's so. a good reason not to put it in. <laughs> but a worthy addition, and not just a worthy addition. It's a part of something known as the Trinity. That I was actually going to talk about that. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to steal your thunder. <laughs> it's all right. We can. We can discuss it, but no, the okay. Trinity is a big thing in Cajun culture. It's everything. It's the it's the mirepoix of, of, of Cajun cooking, where the French use onions, celery, and carrot. Uh, this substitutes the carrot with bell pepper. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't we get that meat going? Do we think we're hot enough yet, or are we still? Uh, give it another minute. Okay. Another minute. Go ahead and finish Put with that this there onion. For you. Uh, do you want both onions? Um, no, let's go ahead and just and just save it with uh, with the one. Actually, okay. you know what? Let's let's go ahead and cut it up. It's fine. We're putting it in. Putting so it in. It's a forgiving recipe. One <laughs> onions, two onions. It's what you got on hand. Well, you know the thing is, is that with with Cajun food, 
is is that you know we like to have our portions a little bit bigger because oh yeah we we just like the food you know why why have a small portion yeah when it's that you good? don't see you don't see small Cajun plates at all no like we used to joke around as I was growing up you know we'd look at the serving size and be like four you know serving size four people it's like oh well that's two Cajuns right so yeah <laughs> right right so all right I'm gonna throw these onions in here and then I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that meat great. Put it in our wok. And you're doing it in a wok. That's interesting as opposed to just a regular skillet. Well, you know, I you can do it in a skillet, but I prefer the wok just because you've got more surface area. Oh, goodness, that onion. True. Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> we got a nice powerful onion here. Very, very and I'm powerful. I'm feeling it too. Yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, I prefer the wok because you have a little bit more surface area on it, um, especially once you throw in all those vegetables. Okay. You want to be able to have more room to work. All right, well, now that we've got our meat in the pan, uh, why don't we finish up these vegetables and then we can come back from our break and finish up the, the, the pasta laia on the other side. Sounds fantastic. All right, don't go away. Welcome back to Community Cooking. I am, am with Abby Gremion in the kitchen here, and we are making a dish known as pastalaya. Absolutely. Her take on jambalaya, but with pasta instead of rice. And uh, a lot of prep here. Um, you know, we've got the vegetables that we need to cut up, and that's what we're doing. We're on to the, the peppers and the tomatoes now. But uh, I got to tell you, uh, Abby, the, the, the tasso and that andouille sausage in there, Smells so good right now. It smells like heaven. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of ridiculous how good it smells. Sort of ridiculous. And we're just putting a little color on it, rendering it out. She's kind of keeping a close eye on it so that it doesn't burn. Toss. Stir that up real quick. I mean, that's another, the reason why I like the wok, is that, you know, when you stir it up, right. it doesn't just sit at the bottom. Right, and you, you get you get a lot, a lot of good coverage on it, and you can really spread it out and move things up the side. That's a good idea. Yeah. You know, next time I make pastelaya, did you come up with that term? No, actually, it's that's actually becoming very popular um, down in South Louisiana. Seeing it on menus and things like that. Yes. Okay. Plus, it's a great way if you're on a budget to be able to cook something that's really flavorful and tastes very decadent, and not have it be that expensive. No, no. I mean, we're not talking about a, a ton of dough here in terms of ingredients. And we are actually, you know, we made the uh, spice mix on the other, the, uh, the other segment, and we're going to be adding that to this dish, correct? Yes. Can't wait. Can't wait. Could you use canned tomatoes for this? You could, but, you know, since we, uh, I got these tomatoes from uh, our Torrance Farmer's Market, um, I yeah, like we to should talk about that because this is a meal made for the Torrance Farmer's Market, right? It really is. My goodness. All of this here. Even, I, I wonder, I wonder if, is there anybody there selling tasso or, or andouille? No, there's not yet, but I am hoping that someone will take up the cost. Right? Yes. <laughs> it's a call to action on community cooking here. Absolutely. We need the tasso. We need the andouille. So I'm going to keep stirring this so that way it doesn't burn, but... You can see how it's starting to brown up. Right. Oh, yeah. And that's that's exactly what you want to do. That's a good thing. Because also, too, we're going to be cooking this in some liquid, and it, it won't be quite as brown after it gets done cooking in the liquid. Take exactly. some of that away. Exactly. So if it's a little on the darker side, as long as it's not burnt, you're good. Yep, that's it. All right. We probably could get the onions in there pretty soon anyway. And that'll, yes. That'll give it a little bit of, of, of water and uh, water content so that it doesn't burn. You know, and those those white onions or even the, the yellow pearl onions, man, they have such a great taste. And they really add to the dish. So also sort of forgiving. You could use different types of onions. and. Absolutely. That's why, that's why you know, I mean, I think a lot of people overthink Cajun cooking when in reality it's actually very simple. Right. Right. Yeah. It is. You know, and I think the one thing where people go wrong with Cajun cooking is that they're afraid of the spice. The thing the thing about Cajun cooking that makes it so good is that it's spicy. You gotta be fairly aggressive. You do. 
Right. Okay. That makes sense. So don't be afraid. <laughs> yes. Everything yeah. will be all right. <laughs> more is more, not less is more. Yeah, but you know, it's always good to, you know, as you as you keep cooking, that you you taste it. So we that looking way. for all these green onions. Um. Yeah. Well, actually, let's cut up about half of them. Half. Maybe a little bit more. Grab like two more. There you go. All right. And so, yeah, we're going to cut up everything and throw it all in the pot. Okay. And we want whites and greens here? Yes. Okay. And the little bit extra that you don't use, you can go plant in the garden. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that many times. <laughs> Just stick them right in, That's right in the ground. Exactly. Okay. Right. That's done, and now onto the parsley. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna want to use a half of a bunch of parsley. Okay. So it's like you don't want it too heavy, but you want just enough. Yeah, it gives it a nice sort of like herby flavor to it, brightens it up a little bit, freshens it up, I should say. Absolutely. Because this is a, this is a, this is a, a meal that, 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 that's built for hungry people. Oh yeah, and it, it's also great for leftovers. All right, well you can, I am done here. All right. You want to get those onions in the pan and Absolutely. that way we don't have to worry so much about the sausage. So we're going to toss this in there, look how pretty. Oh my goodness, That's the gonna smell. That's going to get very colorful very, very fast. Very quick. So, all right, so we're going to throw those peppers in there. Mm. Let's see. Um, I'm going to actually grab these bowls and Yeah, add why don't you use the bowl there? That'll and then we're going to throw in our beautiful tomatoes. And they don't need to be seeded or, or skinned or anything. No. You just sort of rough chop them. You just rough chop them, you know. The thing about the tomato that's important about this dish is that it sweetens it up a little bit. Right, and it's also going to add to the sauce too. It's yes. going to release a lot of liquid. Yes. Okay. As it starts to cook down. And then you just kind of get that really beautiful. Yeah, look at how much food that makes. <laughs> yeah. This, this is why Cajuns, we, we <laughs> We cook a lot because we eat a lot because it's good. Parsley and green onion going in at the same time? Absolutely. So okay. we're going to throw everything in the pan. Look at that. Everybody in the pool, as they say. Absolutely. So another reason why I use the wok, because it's big enough. So yeah, true. So you really throw do that all need in. A... And we're going to mix this up. All right. So, oh my gosh, I wish everybody at home could smell this. It's yeah, it smells amazing. great. It smells great. <laughs> so once everything has been, you know, kind of folded in, I go ahead and I take a cup of water and two and a half cups of chicken stock. Okay. And I pour that in there. So we're going to throw the water. Okay. And this is going to not only help sort of cook that down a little bit, but it's also going to be the liquid that you're going to use for cooking the pasta because you actually cook the pasta right in that pot. Yep. How fun is that? So you're not using like a separate pot to cook this pasta. Exactly. Well, and I, I feel like Cajuns were kind of the, the first to master that one pot. Without a doubt. Yes. Right? I mean... <laughs> Without a doubt, there's a lot of dishes in Cajun Creole cooking that come from, more so Cajun probably, that come from one pot. Yeah, exactly. We were just talking in the break about red beans and rice. I have a friend from Louisiana who that was dinner every single Monday night, and the reason was it was laundry night. Mm -hmm. And, you know, m mom had like five or six kids and, and a husband, and, you know, it's like that's a lot of laundry. It takes a whole day to do it. Didn't want to do it over the weekend, so we'd do it on Monday, and then would do red beans and rice because the red beans had to cook all day. Yep. So as long as you're home doing laundry, you can stir beans every 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, you can. You just you just put it on low to medium heat, and you just let it let it cook all day long. Yep. Yeah. So oh, we won't. So yes, now we, we need to throw in some here, right? of our ingredients okay. here. So we're going to throw in some thyme. Very much a uh, a, a, a a New Orleans Louisiana flavor that thyme. Oh, throw all of it in, but we're going to put a good amount. So then we're also going to throw in some of that. And then we're going to throw in some and oregano. This was what the, uh, I think that was dried thyme. Dried thyme. That was, that's, I like to use the fresh thyme a little bit more. Okay. So then that was oregano. And then we're going to throw in our smoked smoke paprika. Okay. And then the garlic. Most important thing. Okay. 
Yeah, you got to get that garlic paste. Get in that there. garlic in there, and again, fold it up. Fold it up into the pot. And then does the cream get added now, or do we? The or cream we, is going to get added at the very at end. At the very end, okay. So. so we have to bring that up to a boil now, basically. Yeah. So I'm gonna adjust that heat up to it high. It smells fantastic. It really does. <laughs> <laughs> they call them aromatics for a reason, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right? And then when do you add your Cajun seasoning? So um, we're going to add our Cajun seasoning now. And again, you fold it in. Okay. So. And this is sort of, is this a to taste sort of thing? or? Uh, yeah, I would say so. You know, like the, the recipe calls for, um, I think, a teaspoon and a half. Okay. But I'm just going to throw a good amount of it in because, as you can see, we've got a lot of food. And we just talked about being aggressive with our, our Cajun seasoning yeah. and not, you know. Don't be scared. Under right. Right. <laughs> so, oh, my goodness, this smells amazing. Now, do you, do you find, you know, it's funny because I think that, like, a lot of people associate Cajun food with not just spicy but also heat. But it's really not a ton of heat. It's really not. It's just, it's, I, I would refer to it more as, like, intricately spiced. Yes. Very intricate. Yes. You look at some like old uh, recipes that have you know been around for hundreds of years, and they call for a, like ingredients like sassafras, you know, gumbos, the sassafras that's in there, the gumbo fillet, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, or, or, or things like uh, mace, yes, which is the covering of the nutmeg. Okay, so we once this comes up to a boil, we are going to drop our pasta, and then when the pasta is done, we're kind of eating. We're we're eating. So you know what? Actually, I'd like to throw that pasta in now. Let's do that. I think it's perfect time to go to break. We'll get cleaned up, and when we come back on the other side, we're eating pasta laia. Don't go away. Don't wait. Communicate. Make your emergency plan today. Welcome back. I'm with Abby Gremion, and we have pastelaya. Yes, we do. We should really quickly mention that uh, our pasta, we used linguine, but you could feel free to substitute that for any long pasta. Absolutely. You did break it up, though, when you put it into the pot so that it fit into that. Otherwise, it would be a little unwieldy. Yes. Okay. And then, if you notice, it made this beautiful sauce. And I think that the starch from that pasta just lended itself to the to the, to the the sauce and made it nice and viscous. Yes, and we added just a little bit of cream at the end. We did, once we killed the heat. So why, why don't we taste All this? All right, let's taste this. <laughs> I can't wait any longer. And I want to get a bite with some of this andouille because that looks great. Mmm. Well, I'm going to tell you, I've had a lot of jambalaya in my life. And that has a legit Louisiana uh, jambalaya flavor to it. I mean, I really, really like it. And it's so interesting how there's so many different things that all become one in terms of the spices and the herbs. Yes, you pick out things here and there, but it really is an amalgamation of everything we put into that, that, that pot. Absolutely. As, as we say in South Louisiana, which literally means, thunder my dogs, that's good. <laughs> All right. Well, we will leave it at that. Abby, thank you so much. Thank you. Please join us again. And this just goes to show you we really are cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community. On behalf of myself, everyone here at the show, Abby, thank you for watching Community Cooking. We'll see you next time. If you'd like a copy of the recipe seen on this show, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to the Office of Cable and Community Relations. That's 3350 Civic Center Drive, Suite 200, in Torrance, California, 90503. Be sure to note the show number displayed on the screen. And don't forget, you can find all the fresh ingredients used on today's show at the Farmer's Market. Visit the one here in Torrance at Wilson Park. That's located at 2200 Crenshaw Boulevard. They're open every Tuesday and Saturday from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. rain or shine. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, email us at communitycooking at torrentca.gov and check us out online at youtube.com slash torrentcitycable and like us on Facebook at Community Cooking TV.